So with the upcoming release of Black Mirror Season 5, I felt like now was a more appropriate time than ever to make a video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time now. I've been wanting to do a comparison of these two pieces of media for a while, mostly because I haven't seen anyone else on YouTube doing it yet. I attribute this to not only the fact that these two pieces of media have far many more differences than they do similarities, but also the fact that not nearly as many people have heard of Don Hertzfeld's 17-minute film, World of Tomorrow. This video helps to change that. While I do feel like it's an interesting concept to try and compare these two pieces of media, I can understand why no one else has done it yet. At face value, it's quite a difficult task seeing as how they are both very different from each other. However, I feel like despite their differences, they still have enough in common to warrant a somewhat detailed comparison and analysis. When you strip everything down, they're both focused on telling short and often horrifying stories about our near and distant future. Black Mirror does this through short anthological stories that often change time period, location, characters, etc. World of Tomorrow tells its story in a more straightforward and narrative fashion. While the time period and location do change around quite a bit, the characters all stay the same, more or less, and this is where it gets interesting. You see, World of Tomorrow only has two characters, and technically they're both the same person, just in different phases of their life. There's our main protagonist, Emily, a young girl about four years old or so, and our other main character is Emily as well, except this one is a much older Emily from far into the future. How far into the future, you might ask? Apparently far enough into the future to span over three average human lifespans. You see, the Emily from the future is actually a clone of young Emily from the past. Apparently, at some point in Emily's lifespan, humans managed to develop the ability to clone ourselves in an attempt to extend our lives into what seems like an infinite amount of time. So, technically speaking, Emily has already lived and died three times prior to the first instance of us seeing her. Now this cloning concept is nothing new, there are a lot of films, TV shows, and comics that have presented the idea before, but Don Hertzfeld does something unique to it. You see, in Don's world, every time a person is cloned, they lose a few of their memories as well as a bit of who they are as a person. The reason why this small detail makes such a big difference is because it now presents the audience with a dilemma, and it leaves them asking the question, why would anyone clone themselves like this if every time you do so, you lose a little bit more of your personality? I mean, wouldn't that kind of defeat the purpose? This small detail gets the audience involved by making them consider their own mortality. It makes the audience ask themselves what they would do if they were suddenly placed into Dawn's world and given the option to clone themselves in this effective, albeit crude, fashion. Now, this isn't to say that Black Mirror doesn't get the audience involved, but very rarely does Black Mirror ever present the audience with a question so heavily tied into the story, but also into the world as a whole. You see, Black Mirror is more about telling other people's stories, and while Black Mirror often does try to integrate aspects of previous episodes into future episodes in order to construct a timeline of sorts. Black Mirror never truly has a definitive timeline, and often episodes can take place years or even decades apart from each other. The fact that Black Mirror is an anthology series can be both a good and a bad thing. It's good because each episode is a new story. It's a new chance to get into the world that Black Mirror presents, even if you didn't like one of the previous episodes. But it can also be a hindrance because Black Mirror doesn't really have any characters. Anytime the story or time period changes, the characters change with it. In World of Tomorrow, however, this entire cloning concept not only brings up the topic of human mortality, but it also acts as an interesting tool that gives the film ability to jump around while still keeping the characters consistent. A large portion of World of Tomorrow is told in flashback. The flashbacks show Emily throughout different points in her life, and they tell us the story of not only Emily's slow loss of her own humanity, but also the ever-increasingly dehumanized world that she inhabits. This gives the audience the feeling that we've somehow been with Emily throughout her entire life, and yet we've only been watching for 15 minutes. See, Black Mirror's goal isn't to make you feel like you're a part of these characters' lives, it's to give you brief glimpses into the lives of humanity's potential future. And while I don't think that this is a bad thing, in fact, I'm quite a big fan of Black Mirror as a whole, I feel like World of Tomorrow has such a simple and yet effective way of showing you a little bit of everything about this character and the world that they live in that I'm surprised that people don't praise this movie nearly as much as they do Black Mirror. And this leads me to my next argument. What is Black Mirror trying to say versus what is World of Tomorrow trying to say? I already briefly mentioned that World of Tomorrow presents the audience with questions about their own mortality, and by and large, that's what World of Tomorrow is about. World of Tomorrow spends quite a bit of its runtime just showing us all of the crude and somewhat horrible ways that humans have tried to achieve immortality. 
from cloning ourselves to uploading our consciousness into cubes that people can then feed information into and even uploading our consciousness into the cloud in order to evade the inevitable heat death of the universe. All of these methods are equally crude and it's implied that some of them are even extremely painful and yet humanity is so paralyzed with the fear of its own demise that we use them anyway. Oh, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh my God, Holy Mother of God, oh, 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 oh God. In a nutshell, the theme of World of Tomorrow is humanity's fear of its own demise. Black Mirror, on the other hand, never really gets this existential. The closest example that I can think of would be the episode White Christmas, when they briefly tackle the ethics of cloning and duplicating one's consciousness, and whether or not we should treat a duplicate of someone else's consciousness as if it were its own individual person and not just a copy. But this doesn't really latch onto humanity's deepest fears quite the way that World of Tomorrow does. You see, everybody is afraid of death. I mean, it's in our very nature. But it's not very common for people to ponder the ethical treatment of clones or prisoners or unborn fetuses, although these are often subjects of intense discussion. If I had to sum all of Black Mirror up in one sentence, I would say that Black Mirror attempts to show the audience how further advancements in technology can slowly make us become more and more dehumanized and less and less sympathetic towards our fellow man. World of Tomorrow, on the other hand, adds something extra by bringing up the question of why humans want to constantly make everything more and more advanced in the first place. World of Tomorrow teaches us that our fear of death and ultimately our fear of being forgotten leads humanity to desperately try to preserve itself by any means necessary. Ironically, the methods that we actually do come up with for self-preservation slowly make us behave less and less like humans and more and more like AIs. Black Mirror teaches us to be afraid of technology and the harm that it can do to our humanity. World of Tomorrow teaches us to be afraid of ourselves and the harm that our own curiosity and instinctual need to be remembered can do to all of us as a society. So let's think about what all of this means. While Black Mirror is still a perfectly fine show, and I wouldn't argue anything otherwise, I wanted to make this video to draw more people's attention to what, in my opinion, is a film that any Black Mirror fan would most likely want to see, and what I feel like is a fantastic film overall. Both Black Mirror and World of Tomorrow are very different from each other, and each one has their own purpose. World of Tomorrow is often dry and lacks tension or suspense, since most of the film is just dialogue and exposition. Black Mirror often lacks any wholesomeness or comedic relief, except for when it only serves as foreshadowing for whatever dark reality comes in later. Both of them have reasons as to why they're different, and both of them have their own flaws. Just because you like Black Mirror doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to like World of Tomorrow, or vice versa. If you ask me, by making a comparison of the two, I only highlighted just how different they are rather than highlighting their similarities. But in a way, that's actually a good thing, because it goes to show you just how easy it is to take what is essentially the same concept, and by adding just a few changes, you can create an entirely different world. If you haven't already seen World of Tomorrow, I highly suggest that you check it out. It's a creative and fun adventure from the crazy mind of Don Hertzfeld, and it's a film that I myself very obviously enjoy quite a lot. Also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel. I make new videos every week, so there's always something new to look forward to. You can also leave me a comment telling me what you thought about Black Mirror and or World of Tomorrow. Which one do you think is better and why? Also, let me know if you're excited about the new season of Black Mirror. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say.